Animal Rahat, a wonderful organization supported by PETA, is improving the lives of donkeys and bullocks and thousands of other animals in India. I'm Lisa Lange, PETA's Senior Vice President of Communications, and I'll be your host for today's meeting. In a few moments, I'll be joined by PETA's president and founder of Animal Rahat, Ingrid Newkirk, and Dr. Heather Rowley, PETA's supervising veterinarian of captive animal law enforcement. Together, we'll give you an inside look at all of Animal Rahat's vital work for animals, including a glimpse into their new sanctuary outside Delhi. If you'd like to participate in our town hall through Zoom and see pictures from some of the astounding animal rescues we'll be discussing, just visit PETA.org slash April Town Hall to get started. And the passcode for that Zoom is 000563. We'd love to hear your questions about Animal Rahat and their work. If you're on the phone, just press zero at any time, and a PETA staffer will jot it down and put you back into the meeting to ask it a little later in the call. If you're joining us online, you can submit your question directly through the question button at the bottom of your Zoom screen. If you find yourself inspired by the life-changing rescue work we're discussing today, please consider pressing seven on your phone and making a special gift to Animal Rahat. For those of you just now coming on the line, welcome. I'm Lisa Lange, PETA's Senior Vice President of Communications, and I'm your host for this evening's conversation. If you're joining through Zoom, that passcode again is 000563. Now, let me introduce PETA's president and founder of Animal Rahat, Ingrid Newkirk, to get tonight's meeting started. Ingrid? Thank you, Lisa, and thank you to everybody for joining us tonight. There is important news to share about Animal Rahat's work for donkeys, bullocks, dogs, birds, horses, civet cats, animals of all sorts in India. And I think you're going to enjoy hearing about Bonzi and Annika. Those are just two of the many animals rescued by Animal Rahat. Um, first, though, a quick request. If you need to drop off early, and I hope you don't, please press 7 on your phone and make a gift to Animal Rahat before you go. Everything you donate, whether it's $5 or $5,000 or $50,000, will give their work for animals a really huge boost. So thank you. Now, many of you know I spent some of my formative years from the time I was seven until the time I was 16 in India. And that meant life lessons and wonderful memories. But not everything I witnessed was sunshine and light. I saw terrible cruelty that I will never, ever forget. And much of it was to working animals. And that's why nearly 18 years ago, I founded Animal Rahat, which uh, Rahat means relief in Hindi. Nowadays, I am absolutely chuffed at what Animal Rahat is getting done. And tonight, we'll touch on some of their life-saving rescues, innovative mechanization projects that result in crushing loads taken off the shoulders of thousands of bullocks and of donkeys' backs. Animal Rahat staffers look as the carts go by on the road, these heavy wooden carts, and if they spot a torture device that's being used to control an animal, and that might be a cylinder that's studded with nails or a nylon rose, nose rope that's threaded so tightly through this uh, bullock's nostrils, a hole seared through his nostrils, tearing into the flesh. They move in immediately and they confiscate those devices. They have seized 162 of those barbaric objects of torture and torment in just the last month, 162 in 30 days. Seizing them is sometimes a crucial first step towards improving an animal's life because it starts a discussion about why the device is being seized and how else the owners can control that animal gently. And often they find that people operate on myth. They believe that donkeys and horses and Bullocks don't need shade. 
that they're so tough they don't need water, that their nostrils can be slit so that they can get more oxygen, and that will make them work harder. This month, the team educated dozens of bullock owners on the importance of providing clean water, of providing shade to protect them from the scorching sun. Simple steps like things to prevent skin parasites. And they convinced 10 owners to provide bullocks with sand beds. That means that they can rest their aching bones at the end of a day's labor rather than the owner tethering them up in a standing position the way most of them do. Animal Rahat has these four roving units and these are vehicles that go out and they educate, they talk to people about bad practices, they race to any emergency they hear about and some of their rescues are truly extraordinary. Um, in recent weeks, for example, they rescued a snake who had become so hopelessly stuck in coal tar, this is a big problem in India, that he couldn't move or even open his mouth. They rescued a civet cat who'd collapsed in a farmer's field and for some reason had severe breathing problems. They rescued a starving dog whose head was trapped in a discarded plastic jar and a donkey who, poor thing, had tumbled down into a dry septic tank and couldn't get out. It took five of them and a lot of elbow grease to finally get that poor fellow out. But it was a lucky break. Uh, our vets checked him over, gave him fresh food and water, and he wasn't injured. Amazing miracle. He trotted off unharmed. The team then went back and they covered that pit. Some of those pits are way too big to be covered. But this one, they'll ensure no other animals fall into it. Um, one emergency call last month that I wanted to mention involved a dog who was found with his mouth tied shut and his legs tightly bound together with ropes. And you can imagine he was utterly terrified. I found a dog just like that when I was a child, but that's another story. This brought back all those memories to me. And the team rushed out in the ambulance. They cut him free from the ropes. They brought him back to our office in Solapur and looked him over. They found there was a wound on his head. Almost certainly someone had beaten him up before they tied him up. And so our team looked after him. And then they did what they always do. They sterilized him to prevent him from fathering other dogs. And what they also did, of course, was file a complaint with the police. And we've offered a reward, alerted the press, trying desperately to track down who was responsible for this dog's suffering and hope to find that abuser before he strikes again. Well, all this field work, while it's going on, caretakers at Animal Rahat Sanctuary in Sangli are tending to 77 donkeys. They're also tending, tending to bullocks, horses, many other animal retirees, and sometimes new residents are arriving during the day. One of those latest residents is Banzi. And if you have Zoom and it's working, you should be able to see him on your screen. He's a little buffalo calf. And our best guess is that he was abandoned by a dairy farmer because it's, it's really common practice for them to just get rid of the male calves and then, of course, take the mother's milk and sell it. Our rescuers found this little fellow. He was trembling from head to hoof, and traffic was whizzing by him on a street in a town called Satara. Um, he was taken to the local Animal Rahat office. He had an overnight stay in an office, his first ever. <laughs> and then he got a clean bill of health and was taken to his new sanctuary home, and greeted with a garland of flowers, which he promptly ate. But that's what they always greet them with, which is really lovely. Animal Heart really does provide such a wonderful, peaceful place of rest and retirement for these weary working animals. Not only at that sanctuary in, in Sangli, where Banzi went, but also we've got a new sanctuary outside Delhi. Um, but before 
Uh, we introduce you to Raju and Dhruv and Sudama and the other residents. Uh, let me just pop back to Lisa for a, a quick few reminders. Thank you, Ingrid. Remember, if you have a question about the new sanctuary or anything we're discussing today, just press zero for your chance to have it answered live a little later in tonight's meeting. And please, if you can, support all of Animal Hot's life-saving work for animals by pressing seven on your phone and making a generous gift right now. A PETA representative will take your donation information and quickly return you to our meeting. You can also give online and see beautiful photos of the animals we're discussing today by visiting animalrahat.com. Ingrid? Yes, um, please do. Please do press seven to donate to tonight's call. Everything we do is expensive. Animals need to be fed and medicated and what, help you, what have you. So we really need your help. We really do. And we need your help to finish Animal Rahat's new sanctuary, which will give even more abused working animals all the security and the care that they deserve. But let me first thank some of our donors. Uh, already tonight, Louise from Pasadena, thank you very much for the $100 gift. Norman from Albuquerque, $50. Michelle from Toronto, $35. Wayne from Indiana, 100 Thank you, thank you so much. Your generosity does truly mean everything to the animals at Animal Rahat. So, in a beautiful orchard, it's a, it's a mango orchard. I was going to say former mango orchard, but it really is a mango orchard still outside Delhi. Animal Rahat is building this new sanctuary, and it's already being used to house the bullocks we've rescued from the lumber markets and other haulage operations in Delhi. We have 8.6 acres, or in India, you would call that 52 biga, uh, with dozens of mango trees, which provide shade, and there is soft, sandy soil that's perfect for the animals to roll in and to relax on. And in late December, that's when the, the very first bullocks arrived, some were in such miserable shape, they actually fell to the ground. But seriously, they fell to the ground because it was the first time in their whole lives that they could lie down on soft earth, and, and, and they, just, they just loved it. Animal Rahat's team began nursing each one of those bullocks back to health. Some had been abused so badly and for so long that they were just afraid of strangers. And um, that included the caregivers and the veterinarians who were trying to help them. One of the bullocks had been so traumatized that he actually wouldn't enter the cattle ambulance to go to his new home, no matter what they did to persuade him. And so they had to lead him to the sanctuary on foot. He had always understood his whole life what to do with a cart. So they used a cart, but this time he wasn't pulling it. He was walking behind behind the cart. So that, that was a first, and that's the way he got to the sanctuary. After nearly 20 years of helping bullocks, Animal Rahat's team has a world of experience in winning them over. They, they do know how to make them feel comfortable, they provide blankets. I hope you can see the picture of the blankets that these, these dear handsome bullock guys get put on them to keep them warm when the temperature drops at night, which, believe it or not, it does, especially in winter in Delhi. And they provide what's a miracle to them, and that's all the fresh food and the clean water that their hearts desire. They've never had that before. And the caretakers give them daily grooming sessions which helps them bond with their caretakers. They look forward to those. So these sessions are such a hit that even the bullock who wouldn't get into that ambulance, now his name affectionately is Bahubali. He loves to feel the touch of a human hand. Today we have 28 handsome bullocks relaxing in each other's company, enjoying these donut-shaped, mineral-rich salt licks that have been hung from the trees for them. They get fodder, they get rest, and instead of being tied up by some painful nose rope every night, they're naked. They're not wearing anything on their faces. 
They're just like sadhus. <laughs> they have no constrictions whatsoever. Um, they'll never feel the weight of that heavy cart on their shoulders again. They'll never feel a foot kicking into their rump to make them go faster. And they'll never feel the sting of that leather whip. So thanks to our supporters' help, and many of you on the call tonight, all Bahubali, Sudama, Dhruv, and all the Bullock brothers will know from now on our kind words, gentle touches, and truly expert care, for which we are grateful too. So if you'd like to see the boys, there's a terrific video showing them. It's on animalrahat.com. It's on right now. And if you haven't watched it yet, I do hope you will, because I really think you'll love it. Um, what we're doing is we're looking ahead to rescuing more bullocks once this sanctuary is completed. And you know the deal. By pressing 7 on your phone and making a generous gift, you can help us get there and get there sooner. Um, but now... Uh, let me pass you on uh, to give you some more details on how Animal Rahat rescued those 28 bullocks from the incredibly, you have to see this to believe it, downright dangerous, chaotic streets of Old Delhi. Let me bring in Peter, Supervising Veterinarian of Captive Animal Law Enforcement, Dr. Heather Rally. Dr. Rally, or Dr. Heather as we call her, has seen Animal Rahat's life-changing work firsthand when she went to India. So let me pass it over to you, Dr. Heather. Thanks, Ingrid. As Ingrid just mentioned, all 28 residents at this new sanctuary were retired from a life of abject, and how they got there is a great story. For those unfamiliar with the city's geography, New Delhi was laid out during the British colonial rule. It has wide streets that the animal carts aren't allowed on. But Old Delhi is a completely different matter. Across its hectic, narrow streets, you'll find bullocks struggling to pull carts loaded with lumber, metal, concrete blocks, and there's people sitting on top of the load as well. Many of these bullocks are skin and bones who are offered water just once a day, even on the hottest of days. Most will never see a veterinarian in their lifetime. So their illnesses and injuries, which are plenty, go untreated. If they collapse and they're too worn out to continue, they'll be whipped until they get back up on their feet. Or they're left there where they fall, and a garbage disposal team will pick them up. The bullocks trudge along the jam-packed roads with no designated lanes, breathing in the exhaust from a torrent of cars, buses, tut-tuts, and other motorized vehicles that zip past them. And these dangerous conditions make accidents like the one Raju was in almost unavoidable. For years, Raju was forced to haul a heavy wooden cart loaded with materials from a timber market. One day, a car struck him with such force that one of his horns became stuck in the car's windshield and it was eventually torn off. Obviously, as you can imagine, that caused poor Raju intense pain. But Raju received no medical care for his injury. Instead, his owner pushed him on to haul the same heavy loads down the same crowded streets day after agonizing day for another full year. Then his owner found out about a landmark program that would be better for both him and his business and for Raju. With the help of Animal Rahat, he could get a battery-powered e-rickshaw that would let him continue to do the work he desperately needed to do to feed his family, and um, Raju would get the restful retirement that all working animals deserve. E-rickshaws don't face the same road restrictions in Delhi that the animal carts do. They'll never get ill or fatigued. They're not a risk for transmitting zoonotic diseases to owners. Um, and they also don't contribute to Delhi's truly hideous smog problem either, where on some days you truly cannot even see 100 feet down the road. He agreed to surrender Raju to Animal Rahat's care, as did all of the owners of the new sanctuary's other residents. The e-rickshaw prog program has now retired dozens of bullocks and many horses from Delhi's streets. And some former car owners actually cry when they praise the program to other owners who still need convincing and I'm sure others soon will be swapping their animals for vehicles, too. Back to you for a minute, Lisa. Thanks, Dr. Heather. And to all of our listeners who are passing along your questions and giving tonight, before we hear from Ingrid again, 
Remember that all it takes to strengthen vital animal rahat programs like this one is to press 7 on your phone and make a gift. We are really grateful. We still have a space for a few more questions that we'll answer live later in the town hall, too. So just press 0 for that, and Apita Staffer will help get yours in the queue. Thank you, Lisa. Um, let me thank some fantastic people on the call who are pitching in this evening. Um, thank you from to Johnny from Mayfield. I'm not sure what state that is. $1,000. Bless you so much. That is fantastic. Kathy from Delaware, 150 Everything counts. Sean from Boise, you're giving us $5. That will buy fodder. Suzanne from Tempe, $100. Thank you, thank you. Diana from Marion, $20. And Carrie in Portland is calling her broker to transfer a gift of stock tomorrow. And other things are coming in, and I love you all, and thank you. Now, who doesn't love donkeys? I absolutely adore them because they're among the most affectionate, intelligent, and patient of animals. And I don't mean to shortchange bullocks because I love them too. But donkeys are truly fascinating they have incredible, incredible physical prowess, and they have sure-footedness in, in, in even really, really difficult terrain. But sadly, as we know, those qualities lead them to be abused by humans who force them to perform backbreaking work, illegal or not, and I'll tell you a little bit of something about that, and in other countries other than India as well as in India itself. One particularly insidious way that they're exploited in India is in sand mining. You may not have heard of this. These operations are illegal, so they almost always happen under the cover of darkness, which makes them not only more dangerous for the working donkeys, but much harder to spot than the other places, like brick kilns, where they also work um, and where Animal Rahat is out helping donkeys during the daylight hours. Um, they work in those kilns until they literally drop dead. Well, this February, police saw one of these operations and they contacted Animal Rahat after seizing 36 donkeys from just one illegal sand mining scheme in Maharashtra. That operation was forcing donkeys to work from dusk to dawn overnight hauling loads of wet sand. And each load, catch this, weighed as much as 440 pounds. So the donkeys carried these loads over and over again from a riverbank to some sort of secret location where these criminals wanted to sell the sand to construction sites. And, of course, before they were rescued, not one of these donkeys had ever been given anything that even resembled medical attention. And not one of them was, uh, was helped in any way if they fell. One of them who was working was heavily pregnant. So after the call from the police, what happened was Animal Rahat very quickly arranged to transport and care for all 36 of them. There were 35 females and one male and they were all taken to the Sangli Sanctuary for examinations and vaccinations, medication, and, of course, to be fed and watered. And just days after they got there, the pregnant donkey, who is now called Annika, gave birth to a little white foal named Daya, all under the watchful eye of Animal Rahat staff, who were really thrilled at the birth. Um, Daya means kindness and mercy which is really a wonderfully fitting name for a foal created under such absolutely terrifying uh, and horrifying conditions, but now born at the sanctuary and safe forever. Unlike her mother, Daya will never carry those sandbags or anything else. Instead, her lives, her, her life, her, her days are going to be spent just finding somewhere shady to sit down and relax or roll on her back and kick her heels up in play in the sand. So it's wonderful to see her. After rehabilitation, the donkeys were all transferred away to our partner sanctuary. That's in the beautiful Nilgiri Hills. It's a 
tribal area and it has rich soil and it has a a, a, a much less uh, hot climate. It, it's far, far better suited for these poor donkeys. Donkeys don't belong in Sangley. They're brought in for labor. So thanks to your support of Animal Hearts, and that's whether you're a long-time donor, Ugo, if you're on the phone, that's you, um, or you've just joined us, please press 7 and give. Give, give to these donkeys, give to these bullocks. Even if it's for the first time tonight, it'll be a wonderful, wonderful thing to do. You will help all 36 donkeys live peacefully for the rest of their lives. Back to you, Heather. While sand mining may be illegal, forcing donkeys to carry, carry enormous loads at brick kilns isn't. The donkeys at these blistering hot kilns are beaten and goaded into hauling huge piles of bricks under an unrelenting sun, all of this without any breaks for food, water, or rest. It's not uncommon to spot donkeys at these kilns with painful chafing wounds and injured joints or to see them collapse from exhaustion or from dehydration. For years, Animal Rahat staff have been regularly visiting brick kilns to provide medical treatment to these donkeys, everything from care for festering fetlock wounds to vaccinations for tetanus. During their visits, they try hard to convince kiln owners and operators to stop using donkeys and switch to eco-tractors, and they've often been successful. Today, Animal Rahat has rescued more than 200 donkeys from the kiln. Many are now retired to that verdant sanctuary that Ingrid mentioned in the Nilgiri Hills, and the team is working to mechanize more kilns. That's not all, though. Animal Rahat is making a world of a difference for thousands of bullocks who are forced to pull tons of sugarcane from fields to factories all over Maharashtra. In India, sugarcane bullocks are forced to work long days without any rest, carrying two to four tons of cane to these factories over bumpy roads in the heat. As you would expect, injuries are common, and the friction of carrying such tremendous weight under heavy, often ill-fitting wooden yoke that rubs on their shoulders can result in an agonizing condition called yoke gall. Yoke tumors are also common, as are uh, serious eye problems from the dust and from a lack of protection from that harsh sun. To keep bullocks working despite the pain, owners whip them, usually with whips made from the hides of bullocks who died before them. They also use torture devices, such as those that Ingrid mentioned earlier, including sharp spikes and even barbed wire that hangs from the yokes and stabs the bullock's necks as they trudge along. Animal Rahat staff confiscate these devices the moment they spot them, and they also coordinate with local law enforcement outside of sugar factories to catch the abusers. And this results in fines that make the men think twice about using such cruel devices again. But truly the most efficient way to stop the suffering of bullocks in the sugar industry is to get these bullocks out from under those loads in the first place. And that is what Animal Rahat's tractor program is doing. The staff regularly meets with sugar factory owners, with contractors and bullock cart owners to work on persuading them that using tractors and trucks is always more efficient and more reliable than using overworked bullocks who sometimes come down with hoof and mouth disease or who go lame from stumbling around on uneven surfaces and experience painful conditions. In the last year alone, this groundbreaking project has helped move more than 6,200 of the sugarcane business and has seen them replaced with 1,100 motorized vehicles. Animal Rahat has now convinced three major sugar factories to go 100% bullet free. So in total, Animal Rahat has secured the retirement of some 31,000 bullocks from the sugar industry since this marvelous program began. And with your help, I'm certain that they'll get overloaded carts off the necks of many, many more in the months to come. Back to you, Ingrid. Thank you, Heather. And the numbers are phenomenal. I mean, 6,200 bullocks out of the sugar cane business entirely. That can only make you feel wonderful. I just got an email from Christopher in Toronto. He saw donkeys suffering in Egypt. And you know, we work in other countries too. Uh, we managed to get Cairo to stop using um, donkeys and other animals at the pyramids, which was a real coup. And Christopher says he's wiring us $500 tomorrow. Thank you, Christopher. 
I actually keep a collection of those whips and those spiked devices that Dr. Heather was talking about, the ones that are confiscated by Animal Rahat. And they're on a display in my office on my shelf. They're a really powerful reminder of the suffering that Animal Rahat is working to stop. If this pandemic is ever over, you come to the office in Norfolk, I'll show them to you, let you handle them, and you will be disgusted at, uh, at them and, and, and delighted that we're stopping their use. Animal Rahat, I mean, as you hear, it's absolutely transforming the lives of thousands of animals in India. So it's really essential that I have to ask you again, Please press 7 on your phone at this very minute to help power this program and all their critical work for animals. Those of you who have followed Animal Heart for some time also know about another problem that we have. It's called the Chinchali Fair. This is a huge annual festival to celebrate the goddess Mayaka Devi. And what happens is many of her followers travel about 200 miles or more to go to this celebration. It's just held in one place. And that means it's at the expense of the ponies and the bullocks who have to pull the carts that are packed with the families and all their belongings over this long distance. The animals who, who, who make this grueling trek have to trot or they have to run for as long as two days straight so that they can get there quickly and their owners can get back and get back to work. And many of these animals become sick or injured along the way. You can just imagine. So when, when the festival is over, then the other problem is that they have to make that exhausting return journey back to their villages. What Animal Rahat does is, um, it, it, and this year it worked five days during the last fair, uh, helping these tired and hungry and thirsty and suffering bullocks and ponies. They operate rest camps. They set them up along the routes to the festival, and that allows them to give exhausted animals a place to stop and to rest their weary muscles, drink a little water perhaps, eat a little. And if the vet spots that they're injured or they're sick, those animals get veterinary care. So by the time the fair was over this year, Animal Rahat's camps had physically assisted more than 3,800 bullocks and 450 ponies. And they provided treatment for everything you can imagine, serious wounds, lameness, eye injuries, other injuries, to 200 of the animals that they spotted were in trouble. But one crucial part of Animal Rahat's work we haven't got to um, is about the animals who don't make the trip to the Chinchali Fair. And maybe Elaine and Peter are on the call. They help with this. And what happens is, through extensive community outreach, Animal Rahat persuades people, and this year they persuaded people in 46 villages to select humane modes of travel, which means trucks, buses, and some of those are sponsored by generous Animal Rahat donors, who I'm sure are on the call now. Animals rested because of that while people took the bus. So thank you, thank you for helping with that. As you know, I'm sure, if you're following the news, India's coronavirus, coronavirus spike is out of control. Um, and one good thing that that meant this February is that the fair was cancelled. The temple in Chinchali was closed before the pilgrims could arrive there, and we worked with state police to turn back anyone who happened to show up at the site. Now, when India reopens, the festivals will resume, and when festivals resume, please please help us make sure that Animal Rahat will be there too on site, and that they have all the resources that they need to provide care for these poor animals. Back to you, Lisa. Thank you, Ingrid. This is your last chance to get in your questions about Animal Rahat's work. So if you'd like to ask yours live, please press zero now on your phone or in the next few minutes. And before we go back to Dr. Heather, I want to take a few moments to thank some special donors. Laura from Oyster Bay, New York, $500 donation. 
Pamela from Essexville, Michigan, 1,000. Wow, thank you so much. Deidre from Marksdale, Ontario, $50. Francis from Mastic Beach, New York, $100. And in Denver, Colorado, we've got a wonderful $400 donation from Carl. Thank you so much to all of you. We really appreciate your support. With the pandemic raging again in India, um, animals who are barely scraping by are facing even more dire conditions. The lockdowns mean, once again, that few people are crowding into the railway stations or lining up at food stalls. So those animals who survived on scraps of food from commuters and from shoppers, they're in deep trouble. They're starving. When the first quarantines began, police started beating residents with clubs for violating them, but the Animal Rahat team received special passes from officials that allowed them to be on the streets to feed these animals. The team is out there every day providing food that's being eagerly eaten by thousands of dogs, cats, donkeys, sheep, and other animals who would otherwise starve. This is a massive effort, so we are just so pleased that local volunteers are pitching in with the teams to make, make it all possible, to make sure that these animals are receiving the nourishment that they so desperately need. Animal Rahat and the staff of their four animal welfare units have built strong reputations within the communities that they serve and among local officials. And they do, they've done this by doing all that they can every time that they can, whenever there's any sort of animal emergency. When a donkey named Ohas came down with a painful case of colic, his owner turned to an elderly neighbor for advice on what to do. The neighbor told him to plunge a thick needle used to sew burlap bags into Ohas's left ear. When that cruel folk remedy didn't work, of course, the owner called Animal Rahat. The team's veterinarian immediately removed the needle and Ohas was treated for both his colic and for the newly inflicted wound in his ear. Fortunately, he fully recovered within days. Animal Rahat emphasized to the owner, though, that should Ohas become sick again, its services are completely free of charge and only a phone call away. But Ohas wasn't the only case involving a cruel quote-unquote remedy that Animal Rahat had run across in the recent months. If Jaya, who had been found, had not been found in the nick of time, um, it would have cost likely two animals their lives. When a staffer noticed a pony wandering down a street in St. Glee, he could tell that something was very wrong. When he spotted on closer examination, he saw a stomach turning scene. Someone had used a thick copper wire to staple the pony's vulva closed. With every single step that Jaya took, the pain from those wounds shot through her body. Whoever was responsible for this depraved act had likely used a, de a device called a twitch. Um, it's used to stop horses and ponies from struggling to escape by tightly pinching their nostrils and lips. Jaya's extremely painful mutilation was a crude attempt to prevent her from being bred. This is not only appallingly cruel, it's also poor, it was also poorly timed because unbeknownst to her tormentor, Jaya was actually already pregnant and she was only days away from giving birth. Animal Rahat's team filed a cruelty to animals report with the local police, and while the officers and local media looked on, the team set to work alleviating this little pony's suffering. Based on her past experiences, Jaya had every reason to distrust humans, and no one would have blamed her for lashing out with a well-placed kick. Instead, she showed great poise and self-control, standing rock still as Animal Rahat veterinarians administered a sedative and then ever so delicately snipped the wires. The only signs of her distress were an occasional flinch or stomp of her foot. And after the last staple was removed and the wounds cleaned, she swished her long tail as Animal Rahat staffers gently stroked her neck and congratulated her on being so brave. Animal Rahat took legal custody of Jaya and will protect her for the rest of her life. Just days after moving to her new sanctuary home in Sangli, Jaya gave birth to a handsome colt, a happy, healthy baby named Rudy, who today is growing up at his mother's side, blissfully unaware that his life and the life of his mother was nearly over before it began. Mother and son are both thriving now, 
these highly social herd animals are, are getting along swimmingly with the other residents at the sanctuary, including Marguerite, who's a pony that Ingrid found when she was in India two years ago, who, believe it or not, endured the same atrocious mutilation as Jaya and who also survived, thanks to Animal Rahat. Thank you, Dr. Heather. Now, before we bring Ingrid back to take your questions, a final reminder that all of the vital work we've talked about this evening, like about Jaya and her son Rudy and Marguerite and all the others, from responding to animal emergencies, to providing a peaceful retirement to donkeys and other animals, it depends on the generosity of Animal Rahat donors. Please show Animal Rahat's life-saving work for animals your support by pressing 7 on your phone and donating right now. You can also give a gift and see photos and videos of some of the animals we've talked about tonight by visiting animalrahat.com after today's meeting. Ingrid? Thanks, Lisa, and big time thanks to Barbara of South Weymouth in Massachusetts, $1,000 that goes a long, long way. Anand, bless your heart for $5. It, that goes a long way too. Lana of Plantation, Florida, $500. Tom of Rhode Island, $100. Carol of Gaithersburg, I think you're the same Carol who helps with the trying to stop the deer from being killed, $50. Bless you. Grundle from Palmetto, Florida, hello. $200, bless your heart. Nicola from Winnipeg, $100 and more. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Your support is critically important to the Animals Animal Rahat's team rescue and the ones they care for every single day. And all this support lays the groundwork for a far more compassionate future, which brings me to a quick word that I want to have with you about compassionate citizen. You may recall some of you, it's an award-winning humane education program that promotes respect and kindness to animals in ways that school children absolutely love. So while the pandemic may have kept students from visiting our lovely classroom at the Sangli Sanctuary last year, and the latest surge in Indian COVID has really paused that whole thing again, Animal Rahat's education team has still found ways to share that compassionate citizen material with about 2,000 eager students from nearly 21 nearby schools who are doing remote learning, and we're part of that. So soon, the team will be very carefully welcoming small groups of students back to the sanctuary again, we hope, because the students are always fascinated to find out what the animals endured before they were rescued. And they're always absolutely horrified when they hold those yoke spikes and those other illegal devices in their hands. And they are super kids. They, they come through, they, we make them promise that they will report anyone they see using any of those devices or misbehaving toward animals in their own villages. Um, but what the kids enjoy most has to be when they go over to our roundhouse and they're allowed in there to brush the sanctuary residents, and that makes the animals very happy too. Um, there was a visit last month where the Animal Rahat team bought a local flute player, a flautist, and he played for the animals. And all the residents, um, particularly this one rescued bull called Mahadev, they're all very big fans of Indian folk music, so they all came over to have a listen. And when the visit came to the end, each student signed the pledge to always be considerate and be kind to animals and to refrain from any activities that cause them distress. And that includes setting off fireworks during Diwali and other traditionally noisy holidays. But for one student, I have to tell you, signing that pledge had a life-changing impact. He was like a lot of little boys. His name is Yashvant. He loved slingshots. And no one had ever corrected him or told him that it was wrong to use them on animals. And so he did. And birds were his favorite target. Well, a few days after Animal Rahat's education officer held a compassionate citizen session in Yashvant's village, they received a call from Yashvant himself, 
about thanking Animal Rahat for those lessons. After that, he destroyed his slingshot. He'd sworn off harming birds and all other animals, and he had started telling his friends not to do what he had been doing. So Yashwant's story reminds me of a terrific quote, which I've written down here. It's teaching our children and other people compassion for other animals and respect for the places where they live will create a safer and more tolerant world. Yes, so rather than shooting at birds today, Yashwant spends his time putting out water for birds, which is a wonderful endorsement of the Compassionate Citizen Program. So thank you all. Your support by pressing 7 on your phone this evening or going to animalrahat.com truly does make transformations like Yashwant's possible. So please, please do make a gift and help provide Animal Rahat's critically important work for animals with the strength it needs to keep going steadily, wonderfully. So thank you. And I think now we're going to take people's questions, Lisa. Is that right? Yes, yes, yes. And the first one is from Jill in Edmonton, Alberta. Jill, what is your question? Hi, Lisa. Why did Animal Rahat need to build a new sanctuary? Couldn't the animals be retired to the first one? Ingrid, do you want to um, answer that one? Yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> well, we don't want to be too overcrowded. We don't want to be too crowded. They have wonderful room to move around in our sanctuary in Sangli. But, and of course, as you heard, we moved the donkeys and, in fact, many of the horses to the Nilgiris and the sheep, actually. We had some wonderful sheep confiscations uh, when I was there last. But um, there's a, a political problem, too. Uh, there are a lot of political problems in India at the moment. But in the, Mumbai, Maharashtra, is a long way from Delhi. And in the Delhi side, there have been laws passed. It's to stop cow slaughter. And what happens is you cannot transport any bullocks or, or cows or buffaloes across the state lines. So from one state to another, um, there's no tra interstate transportation. Um, trucks have been overturned. People have been killed. Trucks have been burned. All sorts of things have happened. So we cannot transport any animals that we confiscate in the Delhi area. And so we really needed a place to put them. And so we found this fabulous mango orchard, and that's where we've started the other one. Thanks, Ingrid. This next question was submitted through the web, and uh, it's from Luis in Fort Worth, Texas. He asks, how is Animal Rahat encouraging other veterinarians and volunteers in India to support their work? And uh, Dr. Heather, this sounds like a good one for you. Sure. Thanks, Lisa. And um, yeah, absolutely. Thanks for that great question. It's actually really timely because um, just last month, Animal Rahat arranged for a group of students from that, the veterinary college there to visit its clinic in the outside of the village of um, Pandarpur. And they actually conducted a bunch of workshops with those students, um, demonstrations with the students, an array of issues, including things like painlessly castrating bulls, um, which requires an array of skills. So everything from understanding how to humanely handle bulls, what techniques uh, to use, blindfolds, et cetera, to more nuanced things like using smaller needle gauges for administering injections, and then some technical skills like how to um, you know, calculate dosage rates for medications and covering the concept of preemptive analgesia, which is effectively um, like proactive pain care, uh, pain management for invasive procedures or for painful conditions. Um, they've also conducted workshops on um, the use of anesthesia in a field setting for large animals, so your working animals who we've discussed extensively tonight, uh, and concepts of applied animal welfare in that setting so that these veterinarians can um, sort of be equipped with that knowledge and those skills to go out there and do the great work that animal or hot veterinarians are already doing. So the college and the veterinary students were really receptive to this program. They learned a lot from the workshops, and so we're really excited about that. The doctors at 
and Laura Hott um, on the staff there are planning to keep this program going and also ramp it up and do more workshops and more demos. So we're really excited about that. Let me butt in, if I may, because Dr. Heather is being really delicate here, and I'm not going to be delicate because I want you to know how important some of these things that Anna Hart does. Um, this is going to be quite shocking. I don't know if this is a trigger warning, but what usually happens is that if they're going to castrate a bull, they just tie his legs together, slam him onto the rocky ground. Um, they don't cover his face. They don't give him a painkiller. And the way they castrate him is that they crush his testes between two rocks. So having our veterinarians go out and show how it should be done painlessly is really quite revolutionary. And so if that gives you any hint of the sort of suffering that they're stopping, I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> Sorry. No, that, I think that's great. To um, And thank you for the question, Louise. Uh, and again, I want to remind everybody that pictures of so many of the rescues we've talked about today and the great work that the veterinarians and others from Animal Rahat are doing, you can see at animalrahat.com. Um, we've got a question now from Sarah in Olympia, Washington. Sarah, go ahead. Hi, thank you. I wondered if Ingrid had a favorite rescue story she'd like to share. Well, <laughs> I have about a thousand, maybe more, um, to try and keep this tight, I guess. I did mention, I think, that um, I, I had also come across one of the horses who had had her vulva uh, stapled shut uh, the last time I was there. So that was a wonderful rescue. I was so happy to be able to spot that because if I hadn't spotted it, then God knows what would have happened to that horse. Um, <laughs> Another thing that stuck in my mind while we were talking, that that dog who we found, Animal Hart found, with her legs bound and her mouth taped shut, um, I found one like that when I was a child, but it doesn't have a happy ending because it was too late for that dog. And in fact, there's a that dog, while I was scraping the mud they had caked into her mouth, out of her mouth, she bit me. And bless her heart, she she died in my arms. Um, rabies is a big problem, and that became a story about me rather than the dog because the dog had passed away. But last time I was there, um, we were going down the road, and you have to keep an eagle eye out for everything. Uh, once uh, this, this is a beautiful little puppy we saw was basically the size of a squirrel by the side of the road. And Dr. Manalal and I, of course, we stop the car, we get the little puppy. This happens all the time. But that little puppy has grown into basically a giraffe. I have pictures of that puppy. And the local dogs are of a particular mixed breed where they have very long legs. So they look as if they're standing on the elevator shoes and then she's got this huge long neck so she's beautiful but she looks more like a giraffe dog than a regular dog but the last time I was there I you shouldn't have started me on this I happened to spot a bullock pulling a cart there were two of them but the bullock on my side as I looked out of the, the jeep uh, his nose was bleeding and I knew that that probably means hoof and mouth disease so we slammed to a, a, a stop, jumped out, and both of those bullocks were struggling with that cart, both suffering from hoof and mouth disease. So um, I actually bought them on the spot because the man was poor. He, he wouldn't have been able to do anything else. And we quarantined them and treated them. And they are the heftiest bullocks you have ever seen. So I'll, I'll try and post a picture of them. I have them as my screensaver. Thank you, Ingrid. The last question, and um, it, it has to be the last one because we're coming to the end here. It was partially just answered by Ingrid, but maybe, Dr. Heather, you can just expand just for just for uh, real quickly. Chris in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, is asking, is Animal Rahat doing anything for dogs in India? And we are, but do you want to just say a few words on that, Dr. Heather? Yeah, I would love to. Um, I feel really privileged to have, have been able to work with the Animal Rahat team there and to see their work with dogs firsthand. Um, there, you know, we've 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 already discussed some of the horrifying conditions that these animals endure when they're homeless on the streets and the rampant 
feral dog population is a huge problem across India. So they're sort of twofold. They're, you know, they're out there, animal hot teams are out there scouting and observing, you know, situations where these animals, you know, who are desperate for food have gotten themselves in into horrible situations such as having their heads stuck in plastic jars or stuck in gates trying to reach food on the other side. Uh, dogs who've been impaled with porcupine quills, who've been struck by cars, I mean, you name it, they've seen it. And so, yeah, they are able to respond to those animals and um, get them the relief that they need. And then on the other flip side, they're also working so proactively on um, sterilizing dogs. So, of course, the root of the problem is overpopulation. And it's also a, a really critical public health issue because these dogs, of course, carry rabies and other zoonotic diseases that can be deadly to humans. So the communities are so grateful for the sterilization programs that Animal Rahat um, has undertaken. And I, they, I believe the numbers are up to 20 villages now who um, Animal Rahat's program have completely sterilized the entire um, homeless and feral dog community around those villages. So incredible work, yeah, that they're doing for dogs. Heather yeah, Lisa, it's you. me again yeah. jumping in <laughs> because I just I just quickly <laughs> want to say all that work. I mean, the village, all the space, they're all free. All the services are free. Otherwise, nobody would take them. Nobody would call us. But I want to thank Joy from Carbondale, Illinois, for a $1,000 gift. It's phenomenal. Joan from East Meadow, New York, thank you for $10. Bless your heart. Donna Dearborn, $250. Patricia from North Bay, $100. Bless you. Abigail from Denver, Colorado, the animals, thank you for the $25 a donation. And I will personally thank everybody who presses seven. So thank you all. Back to you, Lisa. Thank you. There's so much more to say, but we've, we're out of time.